What's up, YouTube? This is Saint Foreman, and this is the Delayed W Podcast with my co-host, Seven. What is up? In this episode, we're doing a story time, and what we have on the panel is Coconut. What's up? Swank. Still here, guys. And of course, our producer and editor, Flame M16. His channel will be linked in the bio below. And our special guest, Yibu. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> so, guys, who wants to tell their story first? I think we should give the honor to our guest, Yabu. I know Yabu has plenty of stories to plenty, but I'm not gonna do them. all the stories now. Right. But I'm gonna share some stories. This is my. Uh, but before we start, I want you on my first podcast, and um, yeah. So bear with me. Um. Let's see. First story. Oh yeah. So the first one I'm gonna tell you about is the nunchuck story. Oh God, the nunchuck story. Uh, this is a story that got me into a big mess and caused me to reconsider my life, reevaluate my life in many different ways. And frankly, um, I thought it was going to ruin my life in the big in big time, but in the end, it didn't. So oh, before goes. you start, Yabu. What's up? Uh, I want to give everyone a little disclaimer. When Satan and I first heard the story, because Yabu he 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 texted us and called us, you know, like right after yeah, it happened. We we did not believe him at all. We thought he was pranking us because he he used to do this shit all the time. It was late too, bro. It was it was, it was late at night. I think it was it like, like two a.m. or some shit. Yeah, some some real late. And we we're like, huh? I woke up. I remember waking up the next morning. I'm like, oh shit. I didn't dream. Well, that. there's going to be an explanation for that. But anyways, yeah. Take so away. yes, first, all right. First thing, first thing y'all should know that back then I was in college, freshman year. Uh, my favorite, my favorite hobbies were um, martial arts and um, video games. And uh, speaking of martial arts, the one thing I did a lot was practice nunchucks. Sounds cringy. Sounds like some kind of uh, sad person thing to do. I know, but that was when I was desperate. I had no friends. I was kind of ugly. Nonetheless, anyways, so one day I had a friend who was interested in making a video together. Well, kind of like a parkour, like like street, like performance via video. And he wants me to be in it with the nunchucks movement. I mean, I wasn't the best at it, but hey, I could do a couple of tricks on it. And then on my way there, I was practicing from my dorm to the campus. And then all of a sudden this police Car, this police officer went up behind me and told me to drop your weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I looked behind me and I saw and I saw him standing there. He had his hand up, his right hand up in the air, and his left hand on his pocket, holding what seems to be some like on his taser or gun, whatever, with his sunglasses on. I'm pretty sure that's what all cops look like, sunglasses, kind of short haircut, whatnot. He uh Tommy dropped the woman. I was confused. The dentist like, what? And then he told me, he came closer to me, told me to drop the weapon. And I looked at the nunchucks, dropped put it on the ground and put it down the ground like some kind of samurai putting a sword on a... Anyways, then <laughs> the cop told me to sit, like, sit crisscross applesauce. Did, I did, did he that. actually say crisscross applesauce? He did. He did say that. He did say that. He told me to <laughs> sit down after crisscross applesauce. He did not tell me to bow down or kneel down. I mean, that's that was so weird because we were we were in front of my dorm at that time, and I'm pretty sure there are people looking around, looking at me. So I was nonetheless, none, nonetheless embarrassed because I was right in front of my dorm. I'm pretty sure there are people leave looking or like someone who knows what's going on. And then next thing that happens, uh, he picked up my nunchucks and lectured me saying, sir, you do know this is a weapon, right? And I was like, I have no idea. I had no idea that was a weapon. And he then he went, walked back to his car, got another cop who came. And I was sitting, and he just put me in the back of his car. I don't know. And I don't know what those two were doing. They took about five minutes discussing stuff. Next thing I know, I was in a riding on my way to jail. Okay. And that... Was like what, first, what time of day was this again? Your, this your was around uh sun, like dawn, about the day, like around six, seven o'clock, I believe. Six, seven at, o'clock. And this was about two or three years ago. I don't know exactly. It was like in October. That's all I know for sure. 
So it was probably mm-hmm. pretty dark around that time since it was autumn, right? Yeah, it was pretty. It was not too dark. It was like sunset. So you could see the cop and everything pretty clear. Yeah, I could see everything. Every I could see everyone and everything. And uh, but when I got to jail, I couldn't like it was dark. Like I was in the car for like 15 minutes and then I saw the sun go down. It's like I know this time it's getting dark around this time. Did you drop but, the soap when you're in jail? Oh, all right, let me tell you how how my jail experience went. So it was my first oh. time in jail. Um, it's not prison. It's, it's, it's not like prison. Don't... Have you been to jail since? No, that's the only time I've been to jail. I don't want to go back to jail ever. Fair enough. And uh, I'm pretty sure no one does. But anyways. That time night in jail was long. Okay, so first thing I got there is they um uh, they kind of strip searched me, uh, maybe do a couple of things to see if I had any drugs on me. Apparently they thought I was on drugs, which <laughs> I wouldn't blame them, since I guess carrying nunchucks gives people the impression someone's on drugs. But no, that's <laughs> I was not on drugs. I don't know, man. Yabu, back in the day, we always thought you were on some different type of shit. I oh, I've been back in the days, but <laughs> oh, a lot of things have changed since then. But we'll get to that in a bit. Right now, let's talk about that one night that changed my life forever. That caused me to lose so much in terms of money, jobs, my ex girlfriend, and the uh, basically sense of living. Uh, after they put me in a like they do all that, they took my mug shot, um, put me in a holding cell, and then I just waited there for the flight for morning i guess no it felt like a really long night because i was the only one in that holding cell at that time lucky then you about, well then about 20 30 minutes later they brought another guy in like a big like a really big bulky black dude and uh he came Pull in your pants down nigga <laughs> now he was there and he told me what i asked him what he what was he in here for he said for parking in a handicap spot, and I was at disbelief. They threw a black man in here for parking in a handicap spot. If that if that happened to a white, I mean, I'm not gonna go. I can't even. I'm not gonna go that too deep into that. But anyways, that was unbelievable. He wasn't. They're not gonna give him a misdemeanor for that. They're just gonna give him a infraction. And then yeah. another hour later, um, they brought another guy in. Now he's some scrawny looking dude. Like he's also black. He's, but he was in for him a speeding ticket. Well, they'll probably ask him why he in here for a speeding ticket, even though you shouldn't be going to jail for a speeding ticket. He's this was like his tenth or eleventh speeding ticket. Well, so he was in here for a speeding ticket. He was a really nice guy. Out that night, that was my first time in jail. He seems to be very um, experienced with being in jail or whatnot, because he was telling me stuff about it's normal being in jail, like this is not the end of the world and stuff. I mean, that whole night, I mean. <coughs> I was nervous, anxious, but I pretty sure, like I called my parents at around what one o'clock, two o'clock, because I was like trying to get a hold of the phone. Well, I, they had a phone in holding cells for prison, so I used that phone to contact my parents. And then, um, first person that picked up was my dad, and he was he was confused at first too. And then he told me like, just wait till next morning. I'm gonna bail you out. So then. After that, I just spent the night talking with those other two people in the jail cell. They were pretty cool guys. They made my jail time pretty actually pretty somewhat interesting. They told me about themselves. I told them about myself. They're pretty cool people. Like they're cool people. I'm not saying like I'm not trying to say that prisons are bad people or anything, but sometimes you meet some pretty cool people in jail. Or sometimes they rip you when you drop the soap. No. That's prison. That's that's completely different. But if I ever go to prison, I expect I probably would. I would probably ex- not look forward to that. <sighs> and the next morning, uh, I had to like face the face a judge to um uh, hear my bond like being put out, and it was at a thousand dollars, which I wasn't really too surprised. A couple like thirty minutes, forty minutes after that, my parents arrived at the jail. Um, only my mom came. No, <laughs> she got me out of jail. Then they gave me like this, um, um sort of like this whole wrap, like this cardboard poster of what, all my belongings. Well, it was not my belongings, like duct taped onto a poster. And I took it home, and my mom, like, when me and my mom, the car, she was laughing her ass off. 
She, she was not. Trust me, like, she wasn't the only one laughing. She was not. <laughs> no, like, I was like, I feel like, mommy, I've been a bad boy. I'm sorry. I, sh- like, I know you might be laughing. She was like, no, you didn't know, you did do nothing wrong. She just said, like, this is funny and, like, this is going to be memorable. Share forever. She basically treating that poster board that with all my belongings as like some kind of like really valuable memo. She was taking <laughs> pictures of it and like showing, she showed my grandparents about it. She told everyone in the family and they were all laughing. Oh my parents. goodness. I mean, it honestly, was, it is a pretty funny predicament. You know, like who the hell gets arrested for messing around with nunchucks? In that's what I'm lot? saying. No one you ever. Know, they did you dirty. You know, the, the, those pigs did you dirty. Like, they shouldn't have to arrested you for that. Just had nothing else better to do and just needed that money, right? The, so they had quota. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, still, I felt like my life was ruined. Like, because the thing is, after email, I thought I got out of still anxious about how my life is going to be from now on because I feel like I might have this on my record. So I spent the next couple of months depressed, really depressed. And then I ended up hiring a lawyer. Lawyer apparently. I kind of scanned me, quote unquote, because he didn't really do anything. And they still dismissed the case. And I asked him how he did it, and he 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 just said through magic. And uh, what am I supposed to? And uh, at least they dismissed it, you know. Yeah, they just, they dismissed it. I mean, they, well, there's never any charges to begin with. Now there are no charges in the first place. Uh, yeah. Uh, at one point, I did contemplate suicide. Afterwards, because I feel like with this criminal, with this thing on my record, there's a lot of jobs I can't do anymore, such as like being a teacher or like, you know, doing like any government work. Because I know those stuff stays on your record and you, if these were to be expunged, they would still be able to see it. There were no charges in the first place. So in the end, everything went, everything ended pretty happily. I ended up losing my job. And lose and lost and then broke up my ex girlfriend and my grades went down. Like I went from a three point eight GPA student to a two point four GPA student, like the, within one semester. So it was tough times for me. And this was two years ago. All these events happened about in twenty well twenty seventeen to be exact. Twenty seventeen. Wow, and, it's uh, really been that long. Huh. It's been a long time, but things have changed since then. Uh, Ever since that nunchuck thing, I changed a lot as a person. I matured a lot. Uh, Definitely. I mean, yeah, I've been through a lot of relationships since then. I took on a lot of different jobs since then. And uh, but in the end, where I'm at now, I can say I'm happy now. Um, despite the fact I have a criminal record, I still ended up becoming a high school teacher and um, have my have my own place to live. Well, I graduated college, got my got a job as a high school teacher, have my own place to live. Got a dog and all that, so life's good for me now. What can I say? I have a question. Wait, wait. What did they end up putting on your rec? Like, what was the official title <laughs> of that? They just put case drop. Well, uh, well, um, what was it? Declined to prosecute. Uh, like prosecutor, yeah. prosecutor didn't want to prosecute, so they just declined to prosecute it. So it's not. It's, it's not, it's not too as, bad, huh? Yes, it's a lot better than like having a case dismissed because there was no case to begin with. So, Glad Jibu, for you. what do you think is your biggest takeaway from this story? Like, what is the biggest lesson you learned? Well, the one thing I learned is that nunchucks, I definitely feel like those were, they made me look like an idiot at first and make me sound like an idiot. And therefore, I'm never going to do nunchucks ever again. Even though I know a lot of you out there, you'll probably love doing nunchucks. I would think it's a hobby. But let me tell you this you look like an idiot doing it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> hey man, I can understand your aversion to nunchucks. They got you in jail, unfairly, but they still got unfairly. you in jail. They still got me in jail. I mean, they're now with Texas passed a recent ban on like recent, I'm not ban, recent like law, like uplifting the ban on like certain weapons, like swords and stuff. And so now you can play with swords and nunchucks in the parking lot, right? You know, you won't get arrested. Oh hell yeah! I would. I can definitely do that. Uh, disclaimer, if to. any of our viewers does get arrested for carrying around a sword or nunchuck and swinging it around, don't blame us. Yeah, don't blame yeah, 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 us. That's all on you, man. But if you do get arrested, you always uh, uh, just know your rights. I don't know what to say about that. Just 
it's not as bad as you think. Here in Texas, the law for carrying those weapons is just a class. I think they lowered a class B misdemeanor now. Back then, they had me like charged with class A. Now. Like they're about to charge me with a class A misdemeanor, but now in Texas, it's only class B. Yeah, man, so the justice I, system did you dirty. You know, those cops really put you in jail for no fucking reason. I feel like it's kind of racist with me because I was Asian that time. Well, I mean, I, mean, I was Asian. <laughs> <laughs> but I was at that time, like, you see an Asian guy with nunchucks, like, walking, the, like, some, probably, like, some weird Asian guy wearing, like, normal casual clothes. I, I guess they thought I was going to murder someone. I'm going to murder someone. Especially up there where, uh, where you were going to college, right? You know, it's not many Asians up there. Not a lot of Asians at all. This college is, like, really among far out from the city, so eh, there's like, what, 10, 20 Asians out of 8, 2,500 students, 25,000 students, I don't know. Yeah. But that's not important, but yeah, being an Asian up here, I just, it gets, like, it just really makes me want to, like, get, like, leave and, like, go somewhere where, there's, where there are other Asians. So, Saint, what, what was your reaction when Yabu first told us about this? I'm like, this nigga is trolling. Like, yeah. he, he has to be trolling. Just, I'm like, stop playing, bro. I'm gonna go back to sleep. Like, this, this. Nigga is <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, like, none of us thought this was serious. We all thought you were just pulling our legs, fucking with us like normal. Tell me, recall, because I completely forgot that. Like, when did I call you? Did I call you like right after I got here, or did I call you in the middle of the night? I remember getting a message in the middle of the night. I kind of looked at it. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I just went back to sleep. And then I woke up. I'm like, oh, shit. Something did go down, you know? Either something actually went down or you're just, like, really going it all in on a joke. But then, you know, as time went on, you know, throughout the day, we actually learned that your ass didn't get sent to jail. <laughs> but, you know, search, but, you know, it says my name is unique. You also find my name on the headlines of, like, list of people arrested and stuff. And then they have my mug shop. Jeez. But they didn't. Did you I, keep your mouth shut? I did, and I lost it. I mean, I still remember what I looked like in a mugshot. It was, I, I guess I wasn't as ugly as I thought I'd be, but hey, mugshots are mugshots. They're supposed to make you look sad and depressed. She just smiled. Oh, my <laughs> God. They won't let you smile if, for a mugshot. That's why. Really? I mean, they, told me don't, they told me don't smile. If it's, like, they told just tell me don't smile, I didn't smile. Crazy. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, that's how they do mugshots. Like, you never, you don't often see people with mugshots smile, do you? I I've seen know. a few, but. She is because probably those jails are different. Like, I think it's different for each jail. It's like, some, like, cops feel like if you want to smile, smile. If you want to show, like, your hairline or something, I don't know. Do whatever you want to in this mugshot. Well, I would uh, dare to say that that was a turning point in your life, right? Hell yeah, it was a turning point. I was an 18 year old guy who was in college. And I wanted to graduate and get a job and like live a perfect life, but with a jail record on my like over my head, I feel like living a good life would be impossible. And you know, if you have a criminal record, you could potentially be expelled from school and uh, get fired. Though I didn't get fired from my job; I voluntarily quit because of school. But that's because my well, I mean, that's because I was failing. So yeah, in the end, I mean, I still didn't do so well in school. Hey, man, look, you know, you're all better now. You've matured as a person, and now we can just laugh about it, right? Even though we did laugh about it when it happened. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm glad this is all over. I mean, I'm glad I can look back on it and, like, say, put, put, if I ever make a buck list and say I want to put a jail on my buck list, and I look back and say, oh, you already did it. Don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's segue to seven. Let's see your story. Oh, my story. I have, I have a bunch. Let's, um, I have a story that involves swing. All this, right. This took place in high school. So back, I think it was uh, 11th grade. I was like one of the only ones that had a car and driver's license at, at school. So after school, we would, I would take swank and some other buddies would always go get some boba. Or they had a jack in the box right by our school. <laughs> I, I think I know where where I think he knows what I'm talking about. So you know, it was just I think it was like a Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, and you know it was right after school. We all piled in my car and we just made like the five minute drive to Jack in the Box. And so honestly, I didn't like Jack in the Box, but 
uh, one of our buddies did it because they had the 50 cent tacos and you know just one of the other dudes he was pretty poor too so he liked going there for the savings right and so we pull up you know i park and we get the tacos or whatnot you know we're eating them and then a great thought flashed through my mind i'm like wait what if i just left them at a jack-in-the-box <laughs> so, continue, I, continue. I didn't think i was gonna be able I thought I was going to be able to pull it off like pretty easy, right? So I'm just like, oh, well, I need an excuse to go up to my car. I'm like, oh, yeah, guys, I left my uh, wallet in the car. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Go, go get it. I'm like, okay. So I get out of the jack in the box. I go to the car. I look behind me to make sure like they're not watching me. And I open, open up the car, get in, I pull out. And this is lady. She's like in this big suburban. She backs out in front of me and hits the fucking light pole <laughs> right in front of me. I'm just like, oh, great. Now, you know, that's more time lost that I can be getting away right now. And so they back up, hit the pole, and she's trying to readjust and stuff. And she eventually just, like, takes off, you know. I'm just like, okay, whatever. And I pull all the way around the store. And by the time I pull around to the drive through I look. And I see, I see them, like, trying to rush and throw the stuff away. <laughs> and I see one of our other friends. Uh, we'll call him B Dog. B Dog runs through, and I roll down the window. And he's like, you know, they told me to stop you. I'm like, you're not gonna stop me, are you? He's like, no. I'm like, all right, get in. So he jumps in, and we fucking speed off into the <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> all right, before you finish us, all right. I had to tell you what we were do thinking. In all right, so we're just hanging out, and I believe B Dog, and we'll call the other friend A. So A and B Dog, we're all eating food. They're all gorging down their fifty cent tacos, which to me, disgusting, but I guess 11th grade. <laughs> they are disgusting. They look like yeah. diarrhea, and they come out like diarrhea. <laughs> no, not That's exactly what I'm saying. But So we're chowing him down when we hear Vincent. We think, oh, he's just being, you know, he usually is. He wants more food. One, right? So we're just hanging out and chilling. And, you know, five, ten minutes go by, and I guess me and, uh, me, B-Dog, and A, we're all oblivious because we're just wondering. We're just wondering what he's doing. You know, we're like, where is he get, Where is he at? Where is he, you know, like, he shouldn't take that long. And I guess I didn't notice, but I, I remember specifically B-Dog looking out the window and seeing this, his car drive by us. <laughs> we're like, yo, where's this nigga going? Like, what's up? And so we're, we, me and A are like, we're, we're cleaning up our shit. Because I don't know if Seven remembers it, but. We were we did not make a good impression on the people working. They oh were no, we did it. That was like probably like our third time there. Yeah, so there was a always like third, fourth yeah, time, just whatever. Out and obnoxious and like leave shit all over the table. Yeah, they, but I mean we would clean up at the end, but you know still got on the nerves. They did not like it because they would give us uh -uh. stares when we were eating, and we were only there for fifteen minutes. You know, it's not like we were there for an hour, but they were staring us down. So I remember specifically getting up. Uh, B dog had already gone on to catch you, like you said. But me and A, we were inside, and we—he was running off. And this lady gives me this like, the fucking meanest mean eyes ever. Dead. I don't even know what to call it because she was staring us down. Like, her eyes told me you better not leave that shit there. I'll kill you. I was like, oh god damn. So I call A back. I'm like, bro, we gotta clean this shit up right now because I'm not. I don't want to piss this lady off. She does not look fucking happy, dude. So we clean up. We need him clean up really fucking quick. And I mean fast as fuck. Like, low-key, we could have missed the trash and thrown that shit away. Not fast enough, time... though. Oh, yeah. We're getting there. I'll, I'll let him... I'll let Seven finish the story, but... By the time we get on, bro, we're outside. Me and are staring this dude. He's speeding off on... On this road that leads to a feeder road of a highway. And we're thinking, what the fuck, man? Yeah, so <laughs> the intersection what? of this road... It, uh, it leads to the underpass below the, the, the highway. And so, you know, there's a lot of traffic going on. And so I have B-Dog in the passenger seat. And, you know, we look behind and we see him, like, just standing there, jacking the box, like, flipping us off and shit. And, you know, we're laughing our asses off. And B-Dog looks at me. He's like, yo, uh, are we just going to go straight back to the school? I'm like, nah, man. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to swing around and pick him up just to, just to fuck with him. And so, you know, I look, I look back on the road and it's like two lights before you hit the – I mean, no, one light before you hit the big intersection with the highway. And so I, I pull up to it, and it's a red light, so I stop, right? 
And then I look in my rear view mirror and I see Swank and A just fucking bolting it down <laughs> the road. And like, there's no sidewalk or anything, you know, they're just running in between the cars and shit. I'm like, oh, oh shit. I didn't think they were going to do it, you know, we're laughing our asses off. And they put, they run to my car and of course I lock the doors, you know, just in case of a hobo or something. <laughs> so I was like, bro, what the fuck? Open the door. And I'm like, nah. And they're like, what do you mean, though? No? And I just rolled down the windows, and I kept on going, and they had to jump through my windows to get back in the car. <laughs> oh, <It was> my. <laughs> so, so going back to the point where they, he said we were flicking them off, I, I remember going outside, flicking them off, because he, they were already, man, they must have been 200, 300 feet away from us. And we were just thinking, what the fuck did we do? <laughs> and I don't know, I don't remember who got the idea. But I just remember we started running. We started running, running after this guy. Not only did he get past that first light, he was under the bridge. So I remember we had to just run across this uh, feeder road with cars <laughs> zooming by. And I'm pretty sure it was their light to go. It so was. We were just kinda, yeah, so we were playing Frogger. We were just, we got to wait for the right moment just to dip. And as soon as they went by, we ran across. And he wasn't lying. I remember trying to knock on that door, and he just rolled the window down. And I mean, I got him pretty easily because I'm not exactly the biggest guy. But I remember, hey, dude, this guy is six foot, probably three, six, three, six, four. This guy's a tall guy, and yeah, he was he was big. He was he's... pretty pretty thick back in high school too. Yes, I just remember I was like, this guy is not gonna fit through this door. But I I remember thinking, I don't care. I'm getting this car, dude. And I hopped in. I hopped in that car so fast. It was kind of like a like a dolphin dive. I I dove into that car, dude. I remember. I remember that so clear. It, I remember uh, when Swank jumped into the window. I was like, God damn, that was a pretty clean, clean dive. And then I'm like, I wonder how A's gonna fit in. And he just kind of like <laughs> swimming his way through. <laughs> but man, I was I was like, like in this... I was like this close to getting away with it if it wasn't for that stupid fucking suburban in front of me that decided to hit the light pole. And that cost me like a good minute. And in that minute, I could have like left all three of those motherfuckers at that restaurant. It was <laughs> great. But yeah. that was the that was only the first time I left them at a store. And I have a bunch of other stories that involve uh, Coconut too in his car. <sighs> and, uh, real life Grand Theft Auto, but we can save that for another time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Coconut, let's let's go to you. Uh, what's your story for us today? My story. Well, you know, when you were younger, you kind of just do stuff without really thinking about it. You know, I, I, there's no, um, there's no repercussions on it. Just really good laughs and stories coming from it. But um, I was in Scouts. All right, we're stupid. We're kids. You know, we kind of do funny shit. <laughs> uh, especially when we're camping for in an entire week. You know, just surrounded by other scouts and uh you know you got to a point where i was hanging out with seven and swank you know we're we're hanging in a restroom we're chilling (laughs) but it was shower time man it was shower time it was was end of the day we smelled like shit you had to get bro dirty as fuck you know but i don't know what i was thinking i believe that seven found a a random tube sock laying around near the restroom. No, no, I think it was Swank. No, no, I, I think remember. that was I think that was me. Not yeah, so. It was Swank. It was Swank. It was me. It was oh me. man. I was like uh I was I was like taking think, a shit or something and then yeah. I heard were, were you the one inside? Yeah I was I was inside okay. taking shit. Yeah, no right. I was right with you. I remember. Okay. It was uh so basically Swank found a random tube sock and he's like man well, you know what? It would be so funny <laughs> if we, you know, stick our little our dicks <laughs> in this, this sock. <laughs> I looked at him like, "What? No way!" <laughs> and you know, he's swank, bro. You stuck it in, actually. <laughs> if I remember correctly, hey man. And you're like, eh, that it's shit funny. would have been funny, bro. Bro, you're like, man, we should pull a prank on seven. You know, when he comes out, he sees this. And I was like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Give me that shit. <laughs> I pulled it, you know. I, I pulled, you know, only the tube side. I didn't feel anything else, you know. Oh. God bless. <laughs> Fortunately, you know, I'm not, I'm not really considered, you know, fully Asian. So. so Coconut like, is well endowed. Let me tell you that. Yeah, he was well endowed. I remember. So, 
Exactly. We were young, dude. We were young. And, you know, Swank didn't really see what got pulled out. But once it, it entered the sack, Swank looks at me and said, holy fuck. <laughs> We filled up the entire damn spot. And we both started laughing. I started swinging it around like it was nothing, bro. bro I was laughing my ass off on the toilet. Oh like, my. I, I heard Swank. You know, it was like, holy shit. Filled up the entire sock. I'm like, what? I, you know, I was rushing. I wiped my oh, ass yeah, yeah. to see what, see what was happening. <laughs> But when you came out, I, you know, I stuffed everything back down there. And I threw oh. the what do we do with the sock? Did we just throw it away? I think so. I think I threw that out of the way. Bro, I don't, I've never seen the sock ever again. Right after that night, it was gone. Yo, whoever's poor soul that left their sock and Poppy found it and was like, damn, this is where I left my sock. Oh, God, bro. You are now wearing a sock that had two dicks inside that sock. <laughs> Why is my socks all sticky now? I don't remember doing Well, okay, it. disclaimer, we did not. <gasps> all right, we did not do that in there. We just stuck it in and pulled it right out after we did a helicopter. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, in my mind, you know, it's, it's boy sc- it's scouts, bro. It's funny as fuck as younger kids. Hell, it's still funny. I mean, it, it, it's, it's still funny, nice but that same night, that same night, after... That little incident, you know, we had the other troop, you know, hanging out with us at the campfire. Oh, God, I know where this is going. Seven <laughs> sat down next to him. He's like, man, who are these random niggas here? I was like, whoa, <laughs> what? And he's like, oh, that. yes. And you're like, I oh, I got a plan. And I was like, huh? <laughs> he pulled down his pants. No, 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 no. Oh. Not yet, not yet. No, here's, oh, not yet. here's my plan. Here's my plan. All right. Oh, you're, you're... I gathered a coconut. Swank, uh, B Dog was there, and we had our other friend, uh, we'll call him Bell. He was there too. And I was like, all right, you know, let's fuck with these little scouts, okay? Because uh, at that time, we were all in like, I think you were in high school at the time. Yeah. And we were in, uh, we were like in eighth grade or whatever. And so I'm like, all right, let's mess with these little scouts. And so we, I'm like, okay, I'm going to need uh, one of you guys to make a distraction. And then I'm gonna moon them, bro. You did you did more than just moon. Them. Oh yeah, uh, I, it was Bell. He was like, "Oh look, you guys see the full moon and all the." <laughs> like, what? Oh moon? my goodness! And right when he turned around, I fucking pulled my pants down and spread them cheeks. It was a black hole. I fell for it. <laughs> and I, I look back and I just see, you know what I'm talking about, like that. Just the. Uh, <laughs> Just that part, the black hole, and I immediately looked away and said, "Holy fuck! I just saw this. He actually did this." <laughs> I see the other scouts <laughs> turn around, and immediately they vanished. Yeah, they screamed. They, just, they dispersed. They they left their the chairs air. there, and they were gone. They left their snacks and everything. The best thing though is that we got their cheese puffs, their animal crackers. <laughs> And whatever bars they, whatever food they left, and we, I believe, we also took their chairs. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, I think they like the next day, one of them came up to me, us, or like, yeah, you know, we told our scoutmaster they're gonna talk to your scoutmaster. I'm like, okay, whatever, because uh, I'm like most like uh, scout troops, like our our adult leaders were pretty cool. None of them were pedophiles, or at least I don't think they were. But <laughs> you know, they came up to our adults and they talk to them and our adults they just laugh their ass off they're like you know boys will be boys and they didn't even talk to us about it they thought it was too funny <laughs> not gonna lie a lot of like like the the leaders adult leaders and other they're very how do you say uh um, non-confrontational just g-rated That's how I say it. Right? yeah they want to keep everything like pg pg while our scouts were going around messing around we were like the cool cool troop but also the bullies <laughs> Like, I, yeah, I can support that. We I did remember. a lot. I think uh, we've, our troop has gotten into a lot of, I would say a lot of confrontations. I've, oh, we've gotten other troops. Down. I think we can um, say we've even, I don't know, we've messed with a lot of people. Oh, hell I yeah. Think oh, we had a lot of our, oh, dude, a lot of our, our uh, scouts had to go into uh, the first aid tent over in a uh, winter camp. Like, a majority of the people that were there was from us and also uh-huh. us. Yeah. Like, we were the cause of so much trouble. 
<laughs> our scout leaders would look at us and laugh. <laughs> I would punch each other in the face and just say, "Oh, boys will be boys." <laughs> I'll remember when. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but D Bell. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I know yeah, who you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah, and that last winter camp we had. Remember when we like those kids kept on like coming up and messing with us at our, our little uh, garage where we would charge our phones. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And, like, one night he was like, man, I had enough of this shit, you know? We're going to go fuck with them. And so they came up, and, like, we were hiding in the bushes, and we all came out, and we, like, we basically jumped them. And D-Bell, he pinned one of those little kids on the ground, and we were we were in high school at the time, and D-Bell, he's a, he's a big dude. He basically pinned him down and started... <gasps> oh, and my you, goodness. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think I do remember I heard that. the story that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It was, like, you know... Swank and I, we just kind of like push him around, you know. That's it. But D Bell just pinned this little kid down, just started. <gasps> we were laughing her ass. Out. I think this kid was like crying. It was it was pretty bad looking back on it, but it was still funny. I mean, they never fucked with us after that, so you know it worked out. Man, there's so many stories about how we bullied kids. I mean, we were the same age. We were the same age, you know. Just just to tell y'all. No, I remember um, a quick aside. A quick aside. I remember we had this flag kind of. The stick was about. Oh, the flag. The stick was the stick was about six foot tall, right? He was carrying it, but he wasn't carrying like a flag. Kind of carrying it to the side, like a book, kind of. So the you know, stick was sticking out both ways. <laughs> and I remember this little kid came up and tried to grab it. And when I say little kid, I mean probably like two years. Old. But at that time, four, 16, 14, two whole different ages. And I remember this kid came up and tried grabbing it. And Nut turned around, looked at him, and the, his first reaction was just to stick him in the stomach with the pole, dude. So Wait. I remember. He, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking dude, impaled this I, I remember this very specifically. He tried grabbing it. Your first reaction, you pulled it back because you were stronger than this kid. And shoved it right into his gut, dude. And he got down to <laughs> the sink. He, he fell to the floor kind of grabbing his gut like he had just been for real stabbed. I was thinking, my God, we are, we are screwed. Because there's no way. There's no way we're getting away with this. <laughs> you just stabbed a kid. I was thinking, man, he's going to... We are so screwed. Dude, best part was the next morning, for me, waking up, we got in no trouble. I was so surprised. No, the kid came back to us and said, I apologize. <laughs> uh, no, I remember... Is that the one? No, I remember their leader came up, or their older scout came up, not only apologize, not even apologize, he like, he applauded us. He was happy. Yeah, oh, he was, like, he, yeah, you know, he was just like, anyways. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> oh my goodness, we went. No, we went to his side. We went to his troop because no, they wanted to talk to us. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. When we were there, he was like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I remember. No, I remember we were walking up with all the older guys, and I thought, "Man, they're gonna get on the fucking ass because you know I'm not." Oh, gonna yeah, we pulled up ready we, for a fight. Yeah, we thought we were fighting because, like, that, like, that ass, I thought, you know, we actually did mess around and kind of fuck up these kids, like, bully them. Dude, he looks up to us, he's like, guys, and I'm thinking, shit, he's serious about it. And then he brings up this biggest smile and he says, thank you. And I'm, <laughs> I'm so ecstatic. I'm, I'm like, holy shit. Not only did we get out of trouble, we did these guys a favor. Like, oh. uh, the thing is, I feel like. He said that last minute because we brought our yeah, we older scouts. Up with like a bunch we of guys. had yeah. no, like, you know, our older scouts were big too. Like they were all athletic. So when they, I feel like when they saw us, they're like, "Ah, uh, nah." <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't expect them to say thank you. I was like, "Whoa, what?" <laughs> and it worked out in the end, right? It was a uh, it was a fun thing, dude. All right, uh, that's enough about our scout stories. Uh, Saint, you got a story for us? The story actually involves seven. Oh, oh, it does. Which one is this? I'm curious. I don't think Yabu was... No, Yabu wasn't part of the stab. This one is when we used to... We'll call this the YMCA. <coughs> we, used to, <coughs> we used to work there during the summer. Yes, the YMCA. The YMCA. Yes. Um, man, is it the Nugget so... story? That I totally forgot about. I might as well say that one too. Um, so the nugget story, we all used to have a staff dinner, which we would just go after work and have a whole like every staff Wednesday, dinner. right? Every Wednesday night. Yeah, it was like every Wednesday night or Friday nights like that. So we ended up going to Chick-fil-A and 
Man, I don't oh, even know. Oh, why. I, I don't know why we did this. Um, still to this day, I don't even know what happened to Seven's pants. The sauce boss. Oh. <laughs> the sauce boss. Sauce boss. Yep. So there is a video. I don't know if it's still on YouTube, but. It would just be this guy, you know, he'd just be like, sauce, you know, sauce boss. That's what he would do. It was like a parody of, uh, what's his name? Rick Ross. <laughs> yeah. And I think Epic Meal Time, they had like a little sauce meme too at that time. Yeah. So it, it was just like a, a, a big hype thing at the time. And mm. Seven was just like, oh, <laughs> let me go ahead and put all this sauce in my shorts. You know, he I had got, every sauce. Yeah, I got every single fucking sauce they had at Chick-fil-A at the time. I remember asking them, and at this time, they didn't charge us for extra sauce either. So I was like, yeah, can you give me, like, two every sauce? You're like, okay, whatever, you know? Because, you know, Chick-fil-A got it unlocked with their customer service. So they gave me all the sauces. I only used maybe, like, one, like, Chick-fil-A sauce. You know, I just stuffed them in my cargo shorts. Yeah, they, they were fucking, like, khaki cargo shorts, I remember. <laughs> Man, when I tell you he had those sauce and it was it was like all right, all right, cool. And then as soon as we were about to start walking, you just heard <laughs> uh, I, I look at seven and I'm like, uh bro, what the, what the fuck was that? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. We didn't even notice until after we got back and started playing uh dodgeball. No, no, we noticed. We noticed because well, I didn't fucking notice. <laughs> no, we noticed because remember the sauce actually came out of your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> All sauced up and ready to go. It, it was a lot of sauce, bro. And he's just like, "Fuck!" <laughs> and did you forget? Sitting there, I yeah, I th- I think I did forget. Like I fell no, or something, or I don't know. No, no, it, it, it popped you somehow. Forget. You didn't forget because then seconds later, you know. Chick Fil A, uh, it, it was like a janitor at the time. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, and she just looks at it, and we're like, "Oh, it's okay, man. We'll go ahead and clean it up." She looks at us, and she literally, uh, all you just see is just, she just scoops it up. <laughs> 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 like, oh man, like it, it was just like, what the fuck? That was like, only one pocket. I, I was like my my left side pocket that popped. Yeah, that. No, no, both pockets. You had it in both pockets, bro. Yeah, I had it in both pockets, but one popped at the at the restaurant, and then when we started playing dodgeball, I forgot I had the sauce. I got like hit. I felt something splat. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? And I looked down, and I'm like, oh shit! All the sauce in my right pocket popped now. <laughs> it's just like leaking all over my leg. I'm just like, fuck, you know? I'm gonna play still. And I remember seeing like all those other white kids looking at me, you know? And they're like, dude, what the fuck is up with that kid? Just running around with sauce all over his leg. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, at the YMCA, we were the only like mine at at the YMCA. Yes, the YMCA. <laughs> I mean, even after uh, Saint left, uh, I still stayed the year after, and that's when I got Swank to come in because we needed like community service hours for high school or whatever. And like even then, it was we were like still some of the only minorities there. It was probably like ninety five percent white. I still don't know why we decided to do the YMCA, as we call it. Uh, I don't know to this day. Hell, it was, the, it was funny. <laughs> the last story, this one involves Swank. No, Swank wasn't there. I don't, no, Swank wasn't there. Seven was there. Mm-hmm. And another friend of ours, um, Afro, he was there, too. I think Yabu was there, too, right? No, Yabu wasn't a part of the staff at the time. He was oh, there, but yeah. Yabu would just show up. <laughs> oh, God. He got to tell the, the, the Sasquatch story after this. Oh, man. We'll probably tell that on part two story Yeah, part, we'll say that for part two. <laughs> man. But this one, so we're all sitting in a staff meeting because we would always have them before we would start the day. And one of the... um. The head workers, like the head staff members, he's like, "All right, guys, so and so." And before we leave for this meeting, I don't know who it is, but we've been getting reports that somebody's been selling campers Beyblades. And oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Beyblades like got big again. Like this is like around 2011, 2012, something like that. 2011, 2012. Yeah. And 
keep in mind, everybody knew who this was. It was our friend. Um, Let's call him Davis. <laughs> Davis. We'll call him yeah. Davis. And we all turned to Davis. Everybody in the room, matter of fact, turned to Davis. <laughs> and he just looks and he's like, wait, no, I, I wasn't selling Beyblades. No, I was trading with them. <laughs> <laughs> I was trading the Beyblades, so, you know, the, the kids, they, they want my Beyblades, you know, I'm like the Beyblade master. It was just like, come on, dude, you you know you can't do that, like, you're, you're, you're too old for this, man, come on, like. Bro, his voice sounded like that, too, he was, like, pretty nasally when we were yeah. back in middle school. We're, we're not joking about that, yeah, that was his, his voice. Yep, and bro, this yeah. this boy tried to, like, argue with the staff members, and, you know, you know Saint and I and Afro, we were just sitting there, like, laughing our asses off. Because <laughs> we knew, we, like, he actually was like trying to do some under the table dealings with the campers. Like, we had the system for them. It was like uh, every time he did something good or whatever, we gave him like tickets, and then he used those tickets to like redeem prizes and stuff. And he would like sell campers or buy their Beyblades with those tickets, pretty much, and like try to run like a whole illegal. Yo, Beyblade business, you know, acting like that shit was weed or something. <laughs> it was great. Oh, man. I mean, this was a good episode and it's brought up a lot of good memories. <laughs> I hope for part two, we do have a plum story that we want. <laughs> oh, God, a plum story. <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring Hopefully... T-, T on here for that. Do we have to bring T because that's his brother. If you haven't listened to the previous episode you got to um t his brother oh man hopefully we'll bring him on to tell the plum story because it is hilarious and maybe we can bring afro for another story that happened who knows Mm -hmm. but yeah this is going to be the the end of this episode i hope you guys enjoy don't forget to Mm -hmm. like subscribe comment and share with friends and anyone to watch this and we also will link in the description below our patreon so that we can keep doing this podcast and get better equipment for you guys yeah but before we go you know i let me know let us know what your favorite story was and maybe uh, leave some of your stories down in the comments you know we'd love to hear it and you know maybe it's good enough we'll share it on the next story time podcast you know uh, i like to give a big thank you to yabu for being our guest and uh thank letting you. us thank you. know more details about his nunchuck story Thank you. you know, it started off pretty funny, and but you know it did leave a good change in his life. You know it got him to where he is right now, and it was great hearing it again. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm uh, seven. All right, I like to give a thank you to Coconut and Swank too for being part of the panel, and I guess we'll catch all on the flip side. I right. later, guys. Take all right, see you later. Bye.